no! How have I done this? I've got stuck in here. I'm trapped. I feel like I'm in prison. How am I going to teach my Sunday school lesson now? Hello? Hello? Help? Can anyone help me? I'm trapped. Hello? I'm right here. Oh, hi. Are you all right, love? No, I'm not. I've got myself stuck in here. I don't suppose you can help me, can you? Of course I can. Oh, thanks. I'm passing you the keys right now. Okay. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, thank you so much for your help. Oh, gosh. I can't tell you how grateful I am. I think I need a cup of tea now. Sorry, I haven't made you one. I do. Oh, hi, how are you? I hope you're okay. Um, sorry, I just got a bit stuck earlier on. Anyway, well, everything's fine now. Uh, nice to see you. I hope you're well. Do you remember Paul's lesson last week? Um, it was about being content with all you have. Remember, content means being happy with all you have and not wanting the things that other people have. Have any of you been using any of Paul's top 10 tips for being content? I really like the idea of uh, having a happy book so that at the end of each day you write down three things that you're happy for. And I did that the other day. And it's, it's good to keep a track of all the happy things that happen uh, that we should be thankful for and to make us content. So when life is good, it's easy to thank God for blessings, isn't it? But what about times of suffering or trouble? Even when, did you know that even when you're suffering or having a tough time, we can still be thankful to God for the things he gives us? And in our lesson today, the disciples, Jesus' special friends, are thankful for the most extraordinary thing. And if you want to read the story in your Bibles, then it's from Acts chapter 5, verses 12 to 42. So, this story is set after Jesus had gone to heaven and the Holy Spirit had come as God's special helper uh, to the believers. Lots of people had joined the new church. Before Jesus' death, he told his followers to go out and tell others about him. Over the next three weeks, we're going to be learning about how the early church grew, how lots of people started to hear about Jesus. The disciples were teaching about the life of Jesus and how he died for people's sins and he'd risen again. And then when he went to heaven to prepare a place for us, he, they taught about that too. They were teaching, if you said sorry for your sins and trusted in him, you could be saved and go to be with him in heaven. They were spreading the good news of Jesus and lots of people were coming to believe in him. Does that mean that if you spread the gospel and teach others about Jesus today, then you're gonna be doing the same thing as the disciples did? Well, I guess you are actually, that's pretty cool, isn't it? The disciples of the early church experienced power like they had never known and amazing things happened. More and more people came to know Jesus. The people were so amazed by what they saw and they brought out the sick into the streets so that they'd be healed. People who'd not even been able to walk were healed and for the first time in their lives were able to walk. All sorts of amazing things were happening because of the power of God being used through the disciples. At this time, the disciples went to the temple every day and taught about Jesus. But the high priest was not happy. In fact, he led the Sadducees, who were a group of people who were against the new believers, and they arrested the disciples and put them in prison. In prison? What? That seems a bit extreme, doesn't it? Well, yeah, it does, doesn't it? Well, the high priest and the Sadducees, who were the leader at the time, were upset because they didn't want people to believe in Jesus. The disciples were getting a lot of attention and they were probably jealous. 
the Jewish authorities were probably afraid that they would lose control because so many people were starting to believe in Jesus. Well, how are the disciples going to teach others about Jesus if they're stuck in jail? Well, do you know, something very exciting happened. That night, an angel of the Lord appeared to them in the prison cell and he opened the doors and brought them out of prison. Cool. An actual angel. Yeah. What did he look like? What did he say? Well, we don't really know what he looked like, but I think he probably looked a bit different to the disciples. Anyway, I know what he said. He said to them to go back to the temple and continue to teach about Jesus. That's a bit tricky, isn't it? Why? Well, they had just been put in prison for teaching about Jesus. If they went back mm. carrying on teaching, wouldn't they get into more trouble? True, that's true actually. And you know, normally we say that we must obey those who are in charge of us, like our leaders and teachers, but if they tell you to do something that doesn't please God, then we should say no. In Acts chapter 5 verse 29, we're told that in those circumstances, we must obey God rather than men. I guess that makes sense, really. Yeah. We should always be wanting to obey God. So what did the disciples do when the angel released them from prison? The disciples obeyed the angel and went back to the temple in the morning to teach. Meanwhile, the high priest called for the disciples to be brought to him. The guards went to the prison early, only to find that the prisoners weren't there. The guards were outside the prison doors and there were no prisoners inside. What a shock that must have been to them. The high priest and the others of the council didn't know what to do. And while they wondered, a person came up to them and exclaimed that the prisoners had been seen teaching in the temple again. So the captain of the guard went and brought the prisoners to the high priest without any violence because the guards were scared of the people in the temple. The high priest said, Didn't we tell you to stop teaching in this name? Peter, one of the disciples, replied, We ought to obey God rather than men. We are Jesus' witnesses and we have also been given the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we obey God. Oof. I'm sure the Jewish leaders didn't like them saying that. No way! In fact, they were furious! And they plotted the death of the disciples. The death? Yes. You mean they were going to kill the disciples? Yes! But don't worry. God had a plan. And a wise Jewish leader named Gamaliel stood up and spoke to the group. He said, if this movement is of man, it will fail and disappear. If it is of God, you cannot overthrow it because you would be fighting against God. Ah, what does he mean? <laughs> he means that if the disciples were working on their own without God, then they would fail. But if they were serving the one true God and teaching the gospel with his help, then the Jewish leaders would never be able to stop them because they were against the creator of the universe. And I think we all agree that would not be a good idea. Well, clearly the disciples did succeed because it's 2,000 years later and we're still talking about it. True. We know that what they were teaching was super important. Anyway, the high priest and the other leaders agreed that they should not kill the disciples you. However, they did have them flogged, which means they were beaten up, and they commanded the disciples again to stop teaching in Jesus' name, and then they let them go. The disciples rejoiced as they left and were thankful to suffer for Jesus. The next day they returned to the temple to preach and teach in Jesus' name. Oh, Don, did you say they were thankful to suffer? I know it seems weird, doesn't it? 
that's what I was saying at the beginning. We know that we should be content and thankful when things are going well, but we can even be thankful and content in times of suffering. This lesson teaching it, teaches us that we can. These disciples were beaten and people were plotting their deaths and yet they were happy because they were suffering in honour of Jesus. They were thankful to be used for God. They were delighted that God wanted to use them to do his work. What a privilege that the powerful God wants to use us, normal, sinful people. So the disciples returned to the temple and continued teaching about God because they knew they were doing God's special work. In England, we don't really know what it's like to suffer or be persecuted for believing in Jesus. But if you know there are, but you know, there are people in other countries who are not allowed to have Bibles, not allowed to say they're Christians, not allowed to go to church. If they do, they could be arrested or put in jail. I think we should pray for these people now, don't you? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lesson and good example of the disciples that they were prepared to risk their own safety so that they could tell others about your love for them. We thank you that even in their suffering when they were in prison and were beaten, they could rejoice that they suffered for you. We pray that we may have the strength that the disciples had to rejoice even in bad situations. Lord, we pray for Christians all over the world who suffer for their faith in you. Lord, please help them keep trusting in you and being thankful for you using them. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, so I've added a link of a good video for you to watch, so check with your parents that it's okay to watch it and hope you enjoy it. Also, don't forget to do your workbook. We're doing lesson number six today. So that's all from us today. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.